Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by American Digger Magazine and Smoking Out Relic Room. And we're back! Woohoo! Woohoo! At the Texas Through Time Museum with my good buddy Andre Luan. Andre! Hey. Dude! Yeah, good yes. to see you again, this man. Is awesome! Thank you. So last time we were with you, we were out in the field, hanging out, doing Permian stuff. Yeah. Now we're, we've got your museum open. Yeah. This is awesome. Thank you. And you've got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, we do have a lot of stuff going on. So one of the really cool things I want to show you today was uh, the microfossils. Remember we collected yes! some of that soil in the field and I told you, hey, this is important. It's full of little bones, but there's a whole process that goes into recovery. Now microfossils, these are like these teeny tiny, and it's Permian stuff. Permian, teeny, yeah. tiny, teeny tiny fossils. Right. All right, dude, show, show us yeah. how that works. All right, so come on. Come with us. Let's go. I'm going to kind of start from the end and we'll work our way back to the beginning so you can kind of see the process in reverse. That sounds awesome. Come on guys. So what we end up with, once we go through all the material, is we end up with a concentrated gravel. Uh, they're picking here, this is Ethan and this is Karen. And so they're going through this fine gravel and picking Come check out, this out guys. all the little bones. This is a very tedious process and this is probably the most time consuming of the whole process right here. So. Let me just pull this box out of here. As you can see, out of all that gravel comes these hundreds oh. and thousands of these little bones. You got a box of gravel? Yeah. Let's look at a box uh, of gravel. Look at that. That is nuts. So all these in here, these are all bones that sorted out of the gravel. So we're just picking it out of this raw gravel right here. Okay, so where so that's what these guys are doing right here. Is they're yep. just sitting down, they got microscopes, they've got tweezers, and they're going through and sorting out these teeny tiny little yes. bones. Alright, so where does this start? Where do you guys get the teeny tiny bones? Oh man! Like well, how does this how does this work? Yeah, I'm glad you asked, cause uh, you know, I hope you hope you're ready to get dirty. Let's get dirty. All right, let's, let's do it. Ah, let's go. All right, so this is Mount Mount Permian. Is what you got going yes, on here? This is Mount right. Permian. So what is this? This just looks like gravel, dude. Yeah. So um, basically, there is a aggregate company that's mining this mountain, okay. blasting the limestone out, okay. and crushing it to different sizes for construction crews, for cement companies, and stuff like that. But in this mountain is a cave system that's filled with Permian animals. No and we have, evidence, we have evidence of that cave system in pieces like this, giant stalactite Whoa. that once hung from the roof of a cave. Get close, check this out. Okay, so what you've basically got is, is, is you've got a solidified cave system. Right. So you had a cave, just like what we've got going on today, caves and whatnot, Absolutely. and then it got filled in with other sediment and completely solidified up into solid stone. Yes. No way! Yeah. And this is a stalactite that, is a that stalactite. once hung down and then got solidified and captured in, into this what became a solid rock again. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, this cave I didn't system, know that happened. Yeah, some of it turned into a flowstone, which is like a calcium carbonate All right, type so rock. what's a flowstone? A flowstone is when uh, the calcium is freed from other limestones that are okay. dissolving, and it gets put into a solution with water as it filters down from the surface. Okay. Uh, and then it redeposits when it drips off of these uh, stalactites. Oh, okay. So, so, Here's the geological process that's going on is, is you've got water that's got acid in it and that water is dissolving that limestone, is dissolving that rock. And within that water as it dissolves, it's got these little calcium particles inside it. And as that water flows down, it redeposits in layers and that's how stalactites and stalagmites form is that redeposit. And it also creates this flowstone in that. That's right. so cool, yeah, dude. Yeah, so what we have is some of these animals are actually just trapped in time, just literally captured like a like a Polaroid photograph in this flowstone. Okay, so all right, so we've got so these are animals that live inside these caves. Right. Okay, so, so you've got critters living, doing their life inside these caves. They die, yeah. and then they get floated over with flowstone and traps them in, yes. and then the cave gets slipped. This is a lot of geology going this on. This is a lot dude. of geology. This is nuts, yeah, man. Yeah, we're talking deep time. I know you're yeah, deep time. Yeah, so this is deep. deep. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. And then here's another interesting cave formation. This is uh, cave popcorn. So these okay. little tiny bumpy uh, formations this. here. That is cave popcorn. So what do you got going on with cave popcorn? So they're basically just mini stalactites. You know, they they don't really stretch out. They don't have the time to form into larger, um, okay, and larger forms. And there's a lot more drips concentrated together. Okay. So this is one single drip where everything kind of come together, it came together and concentrated. And that's a bunch of them. Nice. So yes, uh, so what's going on here? So, so it's solidified, and then how, how does all this get exposed back up again? 
Well, this, uh, this aggregate company is blasting, and when they hit these pockets of clay in this cave system, this is really bad for the crushers. I mean, this is bad news. When this clay is wet, uh -huh. it's super sticky and waxy like beeswax. So if you can imagine running that through a big commercial crusher. So this is the clay that's trapped inside the stone. Damn, that's nuts, dude. This is like pottery clay. It is, it is. It fires red, too. Really? So, yeah. That's cool. So, okay, so wait a minute. So you've got an aggregate company, you said blasting. So you've got, what, an actual mining operation that's going on where this is all happening? Yes. Okay, so the blasting, so this is, these are fossils that are, in a sense, getting destroyed. Absolutely, yeah. The process no! to, yes. yes. Really? Uh, they were only discovered by this mining process, and they're only saved by, uh, you know, collecting this uh, this overburden, you know, this waste that they that they produce out of the mine. So, so you're saving these fossils. Absolutely, yeah. So ah. this stuff ends up um, first of all, it's it's blasted out of this mountain, you know, so that's terribly damaging to yeah. these delicate little bones that we're going to look at here in a minute. But then secondly, it's taken and pushed off into a hole somewhere and covered with topsoil never to be seen again. So we have a very rare opportunity to get our hands on this material and process it before it's lost. It's, it's exposed dramatically and it's lost is just as dramatically. Wow. Now, is there anywhere where these fossils are exposed in any other context? Uh, no. So, so this is for this deep time period, what we're talking about right here for these species of fossils, this is the only opportunity that science gets to take a look at those kind of fossils. Absolutely. Correctly. Yeah. Dude, that is insane. That is a huge service that you guys are doing here at the museum. Yes. That is nuts, dude. Yeah, it is That's nuts. That's awesome. It is nuts to think about it. You know, you're getting to see cave formations that no what? human will ever other no human will ever lay eyes on, and be in this environment that was teeming with life at one time, and now is just kind of frozen in stone. And all through all through here are fossils. Absolutely. Right. So so what do you do? So we've got this big. We got Mount Permian. All right, or Mount Perm. Yep. All right. What, what, where do you take it from here? What's so the next we got, step? So this clay is very sticky. We have to expand it. So we let it dry out. That helps br uh, break it apart a little bit. Okay. And then we take it and we soak it in these pools. Kids and pools. That's, yep, kids pools. Uh, dollar stores, a great buy in the wintertime. Uh, then we let Museum it, certified. And museum certified. Dude, I love it. That's uh, awesome. And uh, they double for, you know, other things. Uh, yeah. You know. But anyways, we soften the clay up. We bring it over here to these screens. Yep. And we wash that material through. So let me just take a scoop in here and show, see what we can find. Okay. Get closer, guys. Let's check this out. All right. So one, so you drag the tubs over here. You scoop this stuff up. Yeah. You get the softened sludge. This okay. Is, once all the clay is broken down, pour all that right. on there. So we're all right. All right. I'm already seeing some pretty nice stuff come to the surface. Look at this vertebrae. No! Yeah. yeah. I mean, crap! Dang, dude, cool! <laughs> Look at that! That is nuts! First scoop! Look at that vertebrae! Yeah, that's a really nice That one. is insane! So that's gonna what be a the, large reptile. What the heck? Are, what species you got going on here? Oh, uh, this is some Dr. kind of, Lujan? Some kind of so pelicosaur, cool. or it could be a, a Micterosaurus, but definitely some kind of predatory uh, reptile. Dude, that is so insane. Yeah. You can't make this stuff up. No, dude, this that is, is great. awesome. First screen. Yeah, all so, right, so that's the that. top screen. You know, all let's right. see what we can so find. You got different this. layers. Yeah. All right, so next level. So it's important to uh, kind of break Come here, it down. Check this out, guys. Piece by piece. This is not. Oh, 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 look at it. Come on. Zoom in on this in the look screen. Look at that. So, right here, what we have is an incredible little jaw. That is awesome. A pair of reptile called Captorhinus. Whoa. Yeah, so these guys had a, a, a totally enclosed skull, kind of like a turtle. They had no extra openings, like called a temporal fenestra, like dinosaurs yeah. and other reptiles. So, these were para reptiles, kind of part amphibian. Part reptile. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because this is the period where there wasn't a distinction between the, you know, the, the, the different species going on, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Everything was kind of mixed up and a little bit of everything else. So now that you kind of have an understanding for what we're doing here, dude, you um, just got two awesome things out of two screen. Lights. I know. Let's, that's let's, great. Let's look at the next one. Okay. Man. I'm sorry. Let's just, go ahead and wash this. All right. We got another nice partial vertebrae there. Nice. Uh, end of a limb bone. So you go down to the next layer. Oh man, I'm already seeing some goodies, Chase. See this? Oh. So oh. last screen. Oh, let's oh, see. Sorry, I messed no, it no, up. It's okay. We need to get all I'm the excited, dirt. Excited, dude! I want it. I want to dive in. We got to get all the dirt out of it. So let's just look around and see what we can 
we can find in here. All right, so what we just saw inside, this is what your guys, you let this dry, this is what your guys are going through? Digging through? Yes. So yeah. there's, so from all that mountain there, you're not missing any fossils. No. No, that is nuts. We're going through every single pound of dirt that you see right there. Dude, just that like is, this. That is ridiculously impressive. It, that it is was. so cool, man. Yeah, I mean, if you take a look back there where Reed's standing, we still have a, an ongoing mining operation. Ah! <laughs> no way, that is yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's, dude. Uh, that's, that's the glory shaft number one right there. <laughs> that's where we had some fine specimens come out of there. That's that's awesome. That's but, a little miners, right? Yeah, little miners. Yeah, yeah. They, can, they can get deeper into the center of that yeah. pile. But as you can see here, you know, we've got some of, oh, Chase, you dude, got another so there's jaw. There's another jaw. Yeah. God, God. Yeah. That's that is so cool. Yeah, I got another one here. This one doesn't have teeth in it, but the one you found did. So this looks like it might actually be two different species here. Wow, that is nuts, man. So at every every level, every screen, we're finding fossils. That's why it's so important that we take this process very slowly and methodically. Right. And we've got to soak every pound of dirt, and we have to process it in these multiple screens. Then we spread it out and dry it, and bag it up and send it into the lab and stockpile it to go through later. No, dude, that is an insanely awesome process, man. This is huge, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Is... I mean, this is these are fossils that will otherwise be destroyed just due to natural progress. All yeah. right, that you guys are going in, you identified it, you recognize it, you're like, hey, can we have a shot at going through and saving this stuff? Yes. You took the steps, you spent the money, you built the place, you're digging through it, you're saving these fossils, and you're helping science out. Yeah. That is, dude. This is so cool, man. I, I dig it, dude. This is this is awesome. Yeah. So all right. So show us the bags when it gets dried out and everything. What's the next thing that you do? Okay. So we take it from this step right here. Okay. So it's really important that we separate the fossils into different sizes because the larger stuff could potentially damage the smaller stuff if we keep it together. That makes so sense. So we pour the bigger material out here on this on this side of the tarp okay. and the smaller stuff over there, and we let it dry so we don't have any problems with. The, you know, mold or anything else like that. If there's any organic material mixed in, but well, now here. wait a minute. So, so can can just the the dampness and the mold itself can they act? Can that actually damage the fossils in the future? Well, it potentially can, especially since there's a little bit of pyrite in this material. Uh, any kind of humidity or dampness can trigger a, uh, a, a basically a pyrite disease where those things start to break down and the fossil can just completely turn to dust. A pyrite disease? Yes. All right, so what's a pyrite disease? So pyrite's disease occurs when uh, pyrite reacts with water to create sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid then continues to break down the pyrite. And if it reacts with uh, uh, shales or clays, then it will even create gypsum and the gypsum is what can spread the pyrite fossils apart further. That sounds like an aw awful, awful it, it, it is. It, it is an awful thing. It is an awful thing. And you know, biggest, every institution around the world has to deal with this same problem. Right. Dude, that's some stuff that not a lot of people would think about that you guys have thought about in order to prevent. So you're, you guys are really going all out to yeah. ensure the safety and the preservation of this stuff. Well, I wish I could say it was foresight, Chase, but it's, you know, <laughs> we learn from our mistakes. Yeah, there you go. I got you. All right, so you got the big stuff, you got the small stuff. Right. So what do you do with the small stuff? Well, we let this stuff dry out really well, okay. and then we bag it up in these sandbags. Okay. And we're going to label it for each size so we know what it is in deep storage. Okay. And, and this is the same stuff that we looked at in there. In that there. They're going yes. For. Okay. All right. Okay. And then and you bag it up and save it for deep storage. All right. We save it for deep storage until a time that we need to pull it out or maybe another uh, institution or a researcher wants to get their hands on some. We can use it for education. That's so cool. So if an institute or a researcher wants to contact you and get a bag of this, you've got this stuff available. Absolutely. Do, all right. So tell them, tell, tell the out there how they can get a hold of you to get this stuff for their research or their study. Well, absolutely. If you're doing a micro fossil study, if you're studying the Permian and you want to get your hands on some of this material, you can reach out to us. You want to get your hands on some of this stuff. Look uh, at this. You can reach out to us at that's... Texas Through Time. Uh, that's our Facebook page. We also have a phone number here at the museum. That's 254-262-DINO. Uh, that's 3466. So that's 254-262-DINO. 3466. Dino, I yeah. love it, dude. Dude, this is this is this is cool. 
that you've got a lot more to show us. Yes. We're gonna show we're gonna show you guys a lot more in episodes coming up. So stay tuned. Andre, this is great, hey. dude. Thanks, man. Thank you. Ah, history rocks. Woo! -hoo!